two steps in the photo lithography uh, iteration that might seem very simple are etching and chemical mechanical polishing. In reality, they have complications and they are very important. Etching is the process of eating away at a certain material in the wafer so that we can create a feature. When we talk about etching, we are usually talking about uh, etching away silicon dioxide so that we can reach the surface of the wafer. However, etching could also be used to pattern other materials, particularly metals and silicon. So recall when we talked about CVD and PVD that at the end of the day, what we did was we formed a uh, coat of the material that covered the entire wafer. So using CVD, we deposit the material a film over the entire wafer. Using PVD, we do the same. In reality, when we deposit a material, whether it's silicon, silicon dioxide, or metal, we want to pattern this material. We want to create a certain pattern on it. We will see in the locus uh, fabrication flow that the way to do this is to use etching to remove the materials from certain areas. And so we actually do need etching for uh, more than just eating away at silicon dioxide. So uh, when we do etching, we um, expose the wafer to a material called the etchant. The etchant is the, is the liquid or the material that removes uh, our target from the, uh, from the uh, wafer. Um, what we want from an etchant is uh, we want it to be uh, fast at removing the material. Uh, we want it to be materially selective, if possible, so that we want it to eat away at the material that we want to eat away, but not to eat away at something else. So, for example, if we use an etchant to remove silicon dioxide, we want it to remove silicon dioxide, but not to remove silicon or metals. So, if such an etchant is, is available, then certainly that would be great. We also want the etchant to be directional so that it removes the material only in a certain direction. We don't want it to be isotropic. Uh, this allows us to create fine features. So there are two types of etching, depending on the type of etchant we use. Uh, there's the, I would say, the default type of etching that we all think about is called wet etching, in which case we take the wafer and we bathe it in a solution or liquid of an, a, a certain etchant. This is usually an acid. Um, so acids are good at eating away at silicon dioxide, for example. Um, wet etching is, it has a few advantages. Uh, first of all, it, um, it can take place at a very low temperature and it's simple, but it has disadvantages. First of all, we are exposing the wafer to a um, a foreign material, the etchant, we are bathing it in it, and this material is a liquid, so there will be um, traces of it left on the wafer, so the wafer has to be washed after exposure to a wet etchant. But uh, the bigger problem is that wet etchants are not uh, di directional, so when they eat away at the material, they eat away uh, in all directions. So uh, in this case, we are seeing, for example, a situation in which uh, photoresist discovering silicon dioxide and we use an acid to etch away the silicon dioxide the acid is gonna eat away in all directions and so we will end up with some lateral eating under uh, the photoresist uh, another problem with wet etchants is that in reality they are not as materially selective as we think so in this situation for example we are depending on the uh, wet etchant being reactive only to the silicon dioxide and zero reaction with the photoresist. What happens is that the etchant is going to react with both materials, but it's going to react much slower with the PR, allowing the PR to um, protect the oxide that lies below it. Uh, the level of protection will depend on how hard uh, the PR is baked, which is why we do hard baking before we do etching to make the PR even more resistant to the etchant. Um, so, what this means is that if we need to etch away a very deep layer of silicon dioxide, we need to bathe the wafer in the, in the etchant for a very long time. 
uh, whether or not the PR is going to resist the asset that long is an open question. So sometimes it's challenging to open a certain feature using wet etching. Uh, dry etching, on the other hand, uh, uses gases in the plasma phase uh, to do the etching. So we use uh, high energy gases, uh, uh, plasmas or ions to eat away at the material. Uh, Dry etching has a few advantages. Uh, first of all, it's uh, more directional than wet etching, so it can create better features. Uh, secondly, it doesn't leave any fluid on, on, the, on the wafer. It's, it's a gas, so it's clean. It doesn't require washing after or anything like that. But dry etching has also a few disadvantages. First of all, it takes place at a high temperature because we need plasma and plasma is going to be heated. And secondly, it leaves a lot of static charge on uh, the wafer because we are basically bombarding the wafer with, with a lot of, um, of ions. And this could complicate something called the antenna effect, which we will look at in uh, a later video. Um, but the main disadvantage of dry etching is that first, it's not usually very material selective. And secondly, that a lot of materials cannot actually be dry etched. So silicon dioxide cannot be dry etched. In fact, dry etching is usually limited to metals and uh, patterning metals. And even then, not all metals can be uh, dry etched. For example, aluminum is good regarding dry etching, but copper is not. So the main problem of dry etching is that we often cannot use it. Another step that we do in, in photolithography is something called CMP, which stands for Chemical Mechanical Polishing or Chemical Mechanical Planarization, which is what, exactly what it says. It's just polishing the surface of the wafer. And we do this through both chemical and mechanical means. So what's happening here is that the wafer is attached firmly to a mounting pad using a vacuum suction. Uh, the mounting pad is going to be rotated in a certain direction. We are going to apply a slurry of uh, materials, of corrosive materials, to the surface of the wafer. Uh, these corrosive materials also uh, include granules, uh, small granules. Um, and using a chuck or pad that um, vibrates and starts polishing the surface of the, of the wafer, uh, and using a chemical reaction that happens due to the slurry and a mechanical process that happens due to the particles in the slurry, the surface of the wafer can be uh, very finely polished. CMP can actually do wonders. It can, um, it can polish the wafer up to a very high accuracy. It can create very uh, flat planes. Uh, historically, uh, the main advantage of and the main use of CMP was to uh, planarize the surface of the wafer after it's sliced from the silicon ingot. But uh, in modern technologies where we have a lot of layers on top of each other, CMP is actually a lot more important because what CMP does is that it ensures that after each step, we create a perfect plane. Perfect planes after a step allow us to um, prevent the buildup of irregularities on the surface and this prevents the formation of unwanted opens and shorts. So CMP is actually a lot more important than uh, many people give it uh, credit. The problem with CMP is that we are applying uh, a corrosive material and we are um, basically being very abrasive to the surface of the wafer. So it's an extremely unclean process. We are creating a lot of particles and we are pushing them through the air. Uh, which is contrary to the philosophy of clean rooms, which is why CMP, when it's done, is usually done in isolation from the rest uh, of the steps of photolithography to protect the rest of photolithography from its contaminating effects.